Hey guys, EST here, and we're gonna do another experiment. This right here is a top quality premium food storage mylar bag. These are some oxygen absorbers. And what do you get when you put some dry goods in there? Throw one of these in there and seal up the top of the heat sealer? Well, this is some tasty pasta, and this is some tasty rice. Look at that. So you could have these flat pack, like a hundred of them, and it's like an inch by, you know, this big. Throw them in a closet and they last forever. And even if you didn't have bulk mylar, you might have like a bag of chips. I mean, mylar is everywhere. Any kind of shiny plastic looking thing that holds food, that's probably mylar. And as you've seen on my channel, you can reseal it with a hair straightener, a professional mylar crimper, or, you know, hold up a torch to a butter knife. They all work, it's just about efficiency and success rate, but uh, what about these, the oxygen absorbers? As you can probably tell by the packaging, you're supposed to store them in an oxygen-free environment, because if these come in contact with the air, you've got about an hour before they completely deplete themselves by sucking up all the oxygen in the air around them. So I've got a pile of a thousand of these that I ordered, but you know, they're not the cheapest. I think they're like 11 cents a piece if you buy them in bulk. So not crazy, but you know, what if you're not at home? What if you ran out of them? Well, you might also have some hand warmers. And these uh, slowly combust, they oxidize. It's basically uh, an iron compound, I think similar as to what's in here, but a much larger scale and a much faster reaction with a higher surface area. So in theory, these should work. In theory. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever tested this and I actually don't know the result. I haven't tested it myself. So we're actually gonna find out if this works in real time. So let's just set it up. So I've got some nice round, soft pasta instead of really pointy stuff, which if you saw my other video, oops. But uh, these don't weigh much, I gotta say, but this will absorb about double the amount of uh, air volume that's expected to be in here. Uh, so let's take a look at the size difference here. Let's cut one of these open. Oh yeah, yeah, she's a little bigger there. Uh, probably weighs about five times as much. So this should be able to absorb just about all the oxygen in a garbage bag. And, and these just sit there and burn at a very high temperature for like eight hours. So let's throw it in there and see if it uh, gives us this nice shrink wrap effect. And no, you don't need a professional Mylar crimper, but I have one and I wanted to 100% make sure that this works for this one test. So why not? Okay, so you don't have to go this extra with it as you can see, but you know, I really wanted to make sure that the only factor here is what we're using to absorb the oxygen. And I did push out most of the air. The big mistake that people make when they don't get this nice vacuum seal is um, they just left too much air in general in there. Well, it's like 70 or 80% nitrogen. Only about, I think, 19% is oxygen. So that's what's going to go away, which is not that much. So uh, I'll give this a little bit and we'll see what happens. I guess if my phone's capable of doing this, I'll actually time lapse it. That'll be pretty cool. But uh, if this does end up working, the, the big benefit here is that this is way, as I would call, over spec for this volume, uh, which means you could use one to do a lot more. Also, you don't need premium food grade Mylar. Like I said, you could recycle a bag of chips or the whole thing with Mylar is that, yeah, it's really thick, pierce proof, okay, cool. But the aluminum coating is what completely blocks ultraviolet light or any kind of light from coming in, even infrared light from heating it up and destroying the food and destroying the calories. So what you could do is just find some food grade plastic laying around your house, uh, seal it up in there. I mean, even a Ziploc bag, uh, seal the top of it with a little bit of heat and then just cover it with, I don't know, paper bag or, you know, whatever you can do. That's the best. I mean, light is going to destroy it the slowest. You've probably got something on the years scale, but I mean a black trash bag, uh, put this inside one of those big, you know, bins of storage bins, put it inside a five gallon pail, whatever you want to do. But the cool thing with this is that when it comes out, in theory, because it has like an eight minute, we'll say, burn time, you should be able to feel that, that the oxygen was good and there was no breaches, no anything, because it will start getting hot again. So you, we're talking 10 years later, you could open this up and say, oh yeah, this started heating up when it hit the air. There must have been no oxygen left in here. And that's huge, because that, that's a verification right there. Wow, it really, really worked. And it's not too hot because it's out of oxygen, so it stopped reacting. So, I mean, compare these, you know, it's tight, tight, yeah. Wow, not bad. So I always assumed from a chemistry standpoint that it would work, but I never actually tried it. So I'm not actually that surprised by it. Now, the other thing I looked up was what kind of crazy chemicals are in those hand warmers. And it turns out it's elemental iron. That's it. 
Now, if that pasta ripped the bag open, I mean, you'd probably notice because your noodles would be all coated in iron and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll definitely hit the bottom of the pot if you boil them. But as far as I could tell from multiple sources, they don't tend to have any other chemicals on them. Now, one of those is way too much iron for a human, but if a little bit of dust came off, it would actually technically be good for you. Now, that said, there might be a hand warmer somewhere in the world where they coat the iron with something to slow down the oxidization. But generally, they're considered to be very safe. What's even safer is to just get proper food grade mylar and get the oxygen absorbers all from the same source reliably, you know, packed in sets of 10 from the get-go. So if you want to learn how to do this, uh, I've got the video on my channel, I'll try to link it in the description. It's one of my better viewed videos because boy will it save you money over those food kits. I think you can make half a year worth of food for like 130 bucks, although that was a year of inflation ago. But assuming you watched this video and then didn't actually do it and then some big event happened, anything from supply chain to shortages to a war to a plague to alien invasion to who knows, society collapse, economic collapse, anything, oh, well, now you need to preserve dry food. Well, where are you even getting it from? That almost doesn't even make sense. I guess if you at the last second had access to a grocery store and then didn't have any of this equipment, which like... A kit to preserve like a year worth of food is not very expensive, guys. Go see the other video for what vendors I use. Also, not sponsored in any way, they just are the best. Just pick it up now, even if you're not going to preserve the food, just go get it right now. But let's say you grew a ton of beans and want to dry them and then preserve them over the winter. Well, they should just sit there in like a glass jar or maybe even the open air. I mean, beans are pretty tough once you dry them. The whole point is they can put up with anything for at least, you know, half a season and then germinate the next year. And if you're going to need food, like, in two months, why are you preserving it in a method that, you know, will make it last 10 to 30 years? But there are a lot of things other than food that get ruined from oxygen. And mylar is waterproof as well, so you can actually seal certain things in there and preserve them. I don't have an extensive list, but I think VHS and cassette recorder tape, which... Yeah, that's old. I believe those are affected by oxygen pretty heavily. I think oxygen is even what gets to uh, optical CDs after about 20 years. So DVDs, you know, that kind of stuff. So if you have some backup media and you're like, oh no, I want to preserve it. Or much more importantly, and, and there's not that many studies on this, but generally it's you know, considered to be pretty true. But if you were to take anything in a pill form, especially medication, stuff with complex molecules, maybe even a multivitamin, and put it in a light-proof, effectively uh, nitrogen-flushed environment with zero oxygen, that is going to be your best bet at emergency preservation of it way past the expiration date. I mean, I got a thousand days worth of allergy meds because my allergies are on a whole other level from anything you've ever heard of, and I would be very, very uncomfortable all year round if I didn't have it. Like, to the point where I'd rather risk some, like, five-year expired pills because I can't get them anymore that I stored in a pretty safe method than go without them. So that's not medical advice and only do it in, in case of an extreme emergency. This is not a practical tip, especially, hello, we're using hand warmers. But now we know it does work. So if you like these practical hands-on experiments where I actually try something in real life without, you know, a whole science lab and just see if it would work if I had to do it, uh, I usually call them dry run videos, hey, hit that subscribe button because there's more coming. And yes, yes, I know I've been delayed. I'd switch jobs. It's a whole thing. My work hours suck. But uh, I do have some very, very interesting electronics and battery and solar related videos coming. So we're going to find out how to charge up your cell phone with some AA batteries. Yes, that is possible. With nothing but stuff around the house as soon as I can film the second half of it. We got the hotel spy device video coming up. That'll be pretty spicy. And hey, it's November when I'm filming this. It's getting pretty cold out. And it looks like 2022 into 2023 is going to have some energy problems. Problems. Oh, my emergency winter heating and emergency like winterizing of your house in case of a power outage series is doing exceptionally well. So go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. It is very, very practical and understandable and very information dense. So hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget the link to the uh, full Mylar preservation video is in the description and I will see you guys next time.